The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astonished us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was at with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Were not our hearts burning within us? Surely the best thing Cleopas and his companion ever did was to invite Jesus to stay with them. For it was in the breaking of the bread that their eyes were opened and they recognized him. You know, we, we don't recognize Jesus because we are smart or because we have a keen eye for what is true or beautiful or good. We recognize him when we have authentic, intimate encounters, often over a meal, sometimes over Zoom. It's a familiar but always powerful drama, the story of encounter and transformation. The Bible, as well as our Catholic Christian tradition, is filled with compelling testimonies of people who somehow with God's help, 
responded to the call to change. And the Bible has a host of phrases that describe these encounters, these calls to change. Throughout scripture, people are born again. They regain sight, acquire a new mind, have their hearts softened. The result, they love more generously and they often become invested in the lives of others they had previously ignored, avoided, or even hated. St. Paul, Francis of Assisi, Mother Teresa, Oscar Romero, Dorothy Day, Thomas Merton, Cesar Chavez, Simone Weil, Nicholas Black Elk, Dom Helder Camara, Mahatma Gandhi, Mother Jones, Pope Francis, and thousands more found themselves drawn into relationship with the other, the one we've been taught to ignore or be suspicious of, the one who is less valuable, less worthy. From the beginning, God has taken the initiative to reveal God's self to Abraham and Isaac, Moses, the prophets, and then through Jesus to the Jews and Romans, to, to Paul, Timothy, and all the fledgling Christian communities about whom we read during this Easter season from the Acts of the Apostles. We have their stories, and when we gather and break bread together or Zoom together, we recount those stories, and when we do it well, our hearts too burn within us. Why? Because God continues to reveal God's self to us today. God continues to call us to change. We too are on the road to Emmaus. Our road these days is a challenging one. We, we have to figure out how to navigate our way back to being together. And none of us really knows what that will require. And none of us knows what that will really look like. One thing is pretty sure. It won't be the same as before. Also, we need to navigate the challenges and stresses and inconveniences of the upcoming De La Salle Renovation and Construction Project due to begin in just a few short weeks. Indeed, our road these days is a challenging one, but we are not alone. We have each other to lean on and to support. We have parishioners contributing thousands of dollars so that other parishioners who have been left out of government assistance can simply get by. We have parishioners calling homebound and isolated parishioners each week just to stay in touch with them and let them know they are not alone. We have dedicated parishioners delivering food boxes each day to families who are hungry. We have parishioners who have worked tirelessly throughout our shutdown, preparing our campus for the De La Salle move-in. We have parishioners continuing to meet in their faith sharing group via conference call each week. And we have nearly 100 parishioners each week go to the Sunday page on our website to worship and reconnect with all the things that continue at St. Charles. This is our path. This is our road. Jesus is right beside us. Are not our hearts burning within us 